God might leave a book just lying around somewhere or inscribed in a rock or something like that. So this is one idea that there is a book just lying around waiting there to be discovered that contains the information uh, that we need. This is one possibility. The second possibility is that uh, God would let every single individual human being know. Every human being and every individual human being would be inspired with that knowledge and with that message and with that revelation from God. This is another possibility. Or the other possibility is that God would send a messenger. God would give this knowledge and this revelation to a specific and special human being. Now Islam teaches that this is the way, the last way, that this is the manner in which God has chosen to let us know, human beings, let us know about Himself, about how we should be grateful to Him, about how we should worship Him and thank Him, uh, and how we should live our lives in a way that is pleasing to Him. This is the manner, through prophets. So Islam accepts and believes in the concept of prophethood, that there are special chosen human beings. And again, when we think about it, when we look at the nature of the human being, and when we look at this option as compared to other options, we find without doubt that this is the most rational, this is the most sensible, uh, and this is the best means of conveying that message to the human beings because there are really more weaknesses and more deficiencies in the other methods. For example, one of the deficiencies in the idea that God could have left some book lying around or God could have inscribed this message somewhere uh, and, and we just discover it and we have to go and discover it. One of the deficiencies in it is there is no practical example of another human being living and acting out that revelation. This is a problem because human beings might say, well, that's all well and good, and here are all these rules, and here are all these things that we have to follow, and this is how we should live our life. But where's a practical example? Where can I see someone doing that? This is something that human beings, from our common experience, we really need that. We have a great need of a practical example for us, either to see directly in front of us, or that we could read about historically, but we need some physical, practical example to see a human being doing those things. That's why the idea of some divine being, some god, uh, some demigod, uh, some angel, some supernatural being coming down, is very deficient because the, it, always leaves the, the, it always leaves the argument open, but hey, that, that's not a person, that's an angel. That's not a, a human being, that's a god. How can we be like a God? How can we be like an angel? It's a perfectly fair argument. But if God sends a messenger who is a human being, who eats food like we eat food, who marries like we marry, who has the same desires that we have, the same needs that we have, has the same weaknesses that the human being has, yet this person is able to overcome those weaknesses and manifest those excellent qualities and display them for us in a manner that is practical and real then we can say, yes, there is a living example of another human being who can live their life in accordance to the will of God. And we can imitate that and we can emulate that. That is why God chose to reveal His message to human beings, although, though, albeit very special human beings. And those very special human beings were the prophets, the messengers. Islam teaches us that there were many messengers sent to many nations, to many people. Some of those messengers uh, you may be familiar with. Abraham, Moses, Jacob, uh, Jesus. They are all mentioned in the Quran as messengers of God. They were all prophets of God. They were not gods or sons of God. They were human beings who were given revelation from God. We believe that the last of all of those messengers was Muhammad. May Allah's peace, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. And that he is the guide for all of humanity. And he is the final messenger. Uh, and he is the messenger for our time. And 
that is another means through which we could understand that Islam is the truth. When we look at the life of Prophet Muhammad, when we look at the life and the teaching and the action and the actions of this man, really a person must be convinced that this man is really truly what he claimed to be a messenger of God. Because his example, the way that he lived his life, the manner in which he behaved, really manifest those qualities of goodness, of honesty, of truthfulness, of trustworthiness, of sincerity, of compassion, yet at the same time of firmness and uncompromising dedication to the message that God desires him to deliver. If we look at the life of Prophet Muhammad, we find all of those qualities are manifest in this man. In fact, really to study the life of Prophet Muhammad is to study one of those convincing proofs and those rational means through which and by which the human being can come to know that indeed Islam is the revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth for the guidance and for the benefit of all of the human beings so that we could live in true peace with ourselves, with our families, with our society and with the world at large. Just as all of the creatures in this universe, indeed even the inanimate objects, the sun, the moon, the stars, are all obeying the laws of God. If we wish to be in harmony, in symbiosis with this universe, then we also need to choose as human beings to submit to and obey the laws of God. But we human beings have a choice. In some regards, not in the manner of breathing and eating, we are like the creatures, we have to obey the laws of God. But there are other things, emotionally, intellectually, in our actions of worship, that we can choose to obey God or to disobey God. And if we wish to be in a true state of peace and harmony with the creation, then we must also do what all of the creation is doing and submit ourselves entirely and completely to the laws and the commands and the will of our Creator and live our lives in a manner that is displaying gratitude and thankfulness to our bountiful Lord who is Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of you.